on the phone, I have a legend that is Tom Green. Hello. Hello there. How are you, Simon? I am very good. How are you? So I'm so well. So nice to talk to you. It's great to be here in the UK. I'm in London right now, kicking off my first tour of England, and uh, I'm very excited about it. I've not been to Bournemouth before. I'm going to be coming there for the very first time to perform this week, uh, next week, uh, yeah, something next like week. that. And yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's exciting. I'm going to Ireland first. I fly to Dublin first tomorrow, and I do a few shows over there and then back into England, and this is going to be awesome. Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> yes, we would. I Daddy, think... <laughs> would you like some sausage? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think I need to start with a thank you, because yeah. a lot of people thank Simon Pegg for giving them the best and easiest fancy dress costume, but I think you actually deserve the credit for that, because I once went out as the backwards man. The backwards man, the backwards man. I can walk backwards fast as you can. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you, you know, Freddie Got Fingered has got this hilarious resurgence that's happening. It's just been incredible. And now I go everywhere in the world I go, people know the movie. And uh, it's been really exciting because when the movie came out, you know, people didn't necessarily give it the best reviews. And it was sort of looked upon as like it was some sort of a failure or something like that. I was supposed to feel bad about myself <laughs> because people thought the movie was too weird or something. But now here we are, 15 years later, and uh, it's just amazing. You know, I, I just performed in Amsterdam. I was performing in Tel Aviv, Israel last week. It's just been incredible meeting fans of the movie and of my shows all over the world. I'm having so much fun. I know. That, that was one of my childhood films I grew up with. I absolutely loved it. You've, you've kind of come full circle in your career because you started off in stand-up comedy when you were 15. And then you kind of went away and you've done loads of other things, some amazing things with MTV, you know, the Tom Green show and everything like that. And now you kind of come back to stand-up comedy. Was that always like your passion? Was that always uh, really that thing that kept you going? It was definitely always something that I, I loved and I wanted to do again while I was doing the Tom Green show on MTV. And, and uh, I started doing an internet television show a few years ago, uh, about 10 years ago, actually. And I was getting feedback and emails and people calling me on Skype from all over the world. And I thought, man, I'd like to take my show to them. So that's sort of when I started doing stand up again. And it's been really the best decision I've ever made in my life. You know, I've always been somebody that wanted to have kind of creative freedom and to be able to get up on stage and tell jokes and not having anybody tell you what to say or anybody telling you what to do is kind of what the Tom Green show was always all, all about. We were always yeah. kind of rebelling against the system and trying to like change the way television got made. And we always had a lot of pushback from the system, you know, executives at the networks or producers saying that you can't do this or can't do that. And, and stand-up comedy does none of that. So I no. get to go do my show and it's going to be completely insane, <laughs> and ridiculous and fun. We can imagine. I mean, just from watching you for, throughout the years, I can imagine the stand-up being pretty intense. But how does it differ from when, you, you know, when you're 15? I'm guessing the sort of comedy you were coming out with is very different to now that you're in your 40s and you've had a whole life and wealth of experience. Well, you know, it's, it's there's some differences for sure. I mean, I definitely have a lot more stuff to talk about, which is helpful in stand-up comedy because you want to be able to have people relate to the subject matter. But, uh, you know, I'm still trying to keep that same sort of absurdity in it that, you know, was very much present when I was younger and is still present. You know, you want, you, you know, I want to make the show weird <laughs> and ridiculous and fun, but I do have some serious subjects that I cover. I, I am a cancer survivor. You know, I, I, uh, I, I, that has changed me. Yeah. You know, it makes, it makes you look at the world through a different lens and, uh, and, uh, you know, I think I put a lot of that into my stand-up, that perspective. It's easier doing stand-up comedy when you're 45 years old <laughs> than it was when you were 15, for sure. Yeah. Who you know, were you performing when you're 15 years old and, you, you know, in front of a whole audience of college students who are out there <laughs> drinking and having sex and you've never had a drink or had sex? It <laughs> kind of is hard to relate to the audience, hard to connect. Yeah. When you were first starting out, who was kind of like your comedy idols? Like when you were first going and thinking, this guy is, he is amazing sort of thing. Well, I think when I was a teenager, you know, it was the first time I really started seeing comedy and thinking, wow, I want to do that. You know, maybe a little before, you know, when I was, when I was 13 or 14 years old, I discovered David Letterman. Yes. Uh, 
before David Letterman, I would watch Monty Python and think, this is the most outrageous <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I was always sort of a fan of the more ridiculous and silly and gross and shocking scenes in, in Meaning of Life, Monty Python's Meaning in Life, when, you know, when the... You know, the fat guy was yes. uh, vomiting in the bucket at the end as a 12-year-old. I was looking at that and maybe missing the overall point and just loving the silliness of it and yeah. the absurdity of it. And they used to play that Monty Python on TV on the CBC on Canadian television uh, every night. So this was mainstream stuff. This wasn't like growing up in America where it was, uh, you know, this was on television every night where I grew up as a kid. So... You know, and then David Letterman, of course, was what made me want to get into doing talk shows and going out on the street with a video camera and things like that. I was also a skateboarder, so I got a lot of my influences came from skateboarding and yeah. Thrasher magazine and, uh, and, uh, and, and watching skateboard videos like Animal Chin and Tony Hawk and the Bones Brigade and all of that kind of stuff, all combined with comedy and everything came together and made me kind of want to get into this crazy business <laughs> and you've done you know you've been in it for years now and huge success um what is your heart if you could have pick one highlight from everything you've done what would be the one thing you're like yes that is the thing i'm most proud not even proud of but just had the most fun doing well it, you know it, it, it's interesting and it, you know i've gotten to do some things that are just I can't even believe that I got to do them. Sometimes it seems sort of almost like a dream that I got to, you know, host Saturday Night Live or yeah. that I got to host a David Letterman show or that I got to make my own movie or, or, or you know, do, you know, won the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. I sometimes think to myself, wow, that actually happened. That's <laughs> unbelievable. That was but a I, I got to say the thing that I'm really the most proud of is the fact that I've been able to keep doing what I love to do and that, you know, this stand up comedy tour that I'm on, you know, this is I'm performing every night all around America. I'm performing all over Canada and Australia and now in England. And I get to, I just performed in Israel for the first time and I'm up on stage and I'm I've got to. I get to keep doing what I love to do, and that I think is what really I'm. I'm, I'm proudest of was just being able to keep it all going. You know, because yeah. it's. Uh, it's. Uh, you know, this industry is is not always easy. You've got your ups and downs. Sometimes you get d d discouraged and you want to quit. Uh, but if you don't quit, you just keep going. You know, it's. Uh, you find new things that you love, and I am just really loving interacting with all of my my fans around the world and doing stand-up this is this is the most fun i've ever had right now this is awesome thank you so much for your time because i know your time is your very very tight schedule so thank you so much for your time tom green and we'll catch you in bournemouth next wednesday the 7th of june for your stand-up tour I, I can't believe i'm coming to bournemouth i can't believe it and by the way i'm on uh, i'm on instagram and uh tomgreen.com just relaunched uh with uh, for mobile so go watch some of the crazy videos <laughs> on there from the from the old show and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you. Awesome. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. All right. Cheers, Cheers. mate. Bye. Bye. Bye, Simon.